What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna kick off our series on learning to use SketchUp for iPad. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first things first, I wanna talk about the app itself and where to get it. So you wanna go into the app store and you wanna search for SketchUp. And it should be pretty simple. There's just an option in here for SketchUp. Now, one thing to note is if you scroll down, notice how there's two options in here. So there's the SketchUp for iPad Premium, and then there's the SketchUp for iPad and iPhone Free. And so if you do it with the free version, basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna act as a viewer, right? You're gonna be able to toggle visibilities on and off, like tags and orbit around your model, but you're not actually going to be able to do any modeling without the premium version. And so notice how you can either do that with a SketchUp Go subscription, that's $119 a year, or this is gonna be included as a part of the SketchUp Pro subscription. There are also some device requirements that you're going to want to check up, check out in here, um, mainly the iOS 15 or higher with the minimum 1024 megabytes of RAM, um, just to make sure that you can actually run this. But now let's jump over into the app. So I'm just going to click on the button for open. That's going to open up SketchUp for iPad. And so what we've got here is we've basically got a home screen where we can navigate our different projects, right? So you can see your projects right here. And actually the projects that you have on Trimble Connect should show up in here. So for example, this table model, if I was to click on it, um, that's actually going to open up the table model that I've done previously in the online version of SketchUp. So I'm gonna go back home real quick. Um, there are also some other tabs over here. So a Trimble Connect tab, a Getting Started tab, um, and a Feedback tab. We're not gonna worry too much about those in this video, but they are over there. And so now let's go ahead and let's create a new project. So let's go ahead and click on the button for Create New right here. What that's gonna do is that's just gonna open up a completely new project. And so let's take a look at our user interface really quick. So notice how we've got a bar in the upper left hand corner. So that's gonna give you access to going back to your home screen, undo, redo, some file stuff, and some settings. So these settings and preferences can be valuable. We're not gonna to worry too much about them for right now. Um, but then also on your left hand side of your page, you've got a toolbar that gives you access to your various modeling tools. And so for example, if I wanted to create like a rectangle, I could click on the rectangle and then just click and drag in here in order to create a rectangle. We'll talk more about this in a little bit, but you're gonna get access to your various modeling tools over here on the left-hand side of the page. Notice how if I tap on them, either with my finger or with my pencil, I'm gonna get different, uh, different tools in here that you can use to do different things. So things like the lasso select, other things like that. All right, so then on the right-hand side of the page, you've got a menu bar that's very similar to the one in the free online version of SketchUp. So you've got these different uh, icons that you can click on and you can do that either with your pencil or with your finger like this um, in order to open those up. So that's going to have everything from the materials that you can apply to your model to um, your scenes and your tags, other things like that. So you've got those all on the right hand side of the page. And remember that if you ever have too many of them over on the side or anything like that, you can just tap these little icons in order to make them go away. So that's the kind of general lay of where everything is inside of SketchUp for iPad. Now let's talk a little bit about how we can start modeling with this tool. So first off, um, the easiest way to model with the tool is to activate a tool by clicking on it and then doing something in your viewport. So in this case, let's say that I wanted to draw a line right here. Well, what I can do is I can put my pencil down with the line tool selected and I'm just kind of dragging it in a direction right here and notice how we get the little inferencing um, colors in here when we do this but you can drag this in a direction and then let up in order to draw this note that you can do that you can also click and drag in a direction and then notice how this length is here you can click on the length and then type in a value so let's say i wanted this to be 20 feet long i could type in a value of 20 feet and then hit the enter button in order to draw a line that's 20 feet long. So um, you can use this in order to precisely model as well. And notice how a lot of the tools over here on the left hand side of the page have the option to lock to different axes. And so notice how if I click on the lock X button and then click and drag like this, then no matter where I put my pencil, this is going to lock my line that it's drawing to the red axis. So this is very similar to inferencing that you do on your computer by holding the shift key. But in this case, we just click on this value right here in order to place that. 
And so now let's talk a little bit about navigation um, and then we'll get back to modeling in a second. So the way that you move around inside of this tool is usually by using your hand. So um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw with your pencil and then you're gonna move around with your other hand. And so the way that works is if you click and drag with your finger, notice what's going to happen is you're going to orbit. So if you use one finger to click and drag, it's going to orbit around in your scene. If you click and drag with two fingers, so if you take two fingers and put them down like this, notice how we're going to pan. So you can use this to move your camera up and down and left and right like this. So you can orbit, you can pan, and then you can pinch to zoom. So if I take two fingers and take them outward and pull them inward, it's going to zoom out. If I pinch outward from a central point, it's going to zoom in. So you can use this to zoom in on whatever you want inside of your scene using your hand. So um, now does this stay active with tools active? Let's see. So if I click and drag like this, you can't orbit around while your tools are active. Notice how it kind of locks your viewport while you're doing that. So that's just something to be aware of is make sure you have enough screen real estate when you're modeling that you don't need to move around when you're adding something to your scene. But now let's talk a little bit about adding shapes. So I'm gonna move over a little bit and rotate like this. Well now let's add a rectangle. And so to add a rectangle, what we're gonna do is we're just going to click and drag like this. And notice how that's going to draw a rectangle in here. And notice when you do that, you're going to get the little dimensions bar over here in the upper right hand corner. So if you want to just draw something in here, you can definitely do that. Or if you want to be more precise, you can click on this either using your finger or using your pencil. So let's say I wanted this to be maybe like a, we'll call it 10 foot by three foot box. I would just type in 10 foot comma three foot like this in order to give it both dimensions. And then I would just hit the enter button and it's going to draw this to those dimensions. Um, now notice how this works a lot like the desktop version of SketchUp in the sense that if I was to click on the select icon right here and click and select one of these objects, I can actually go into the entity info window on the right hand side of the page and I can see the length of anything that I select. So if I select this right here, it's going to give me the length of this edge. Notice how you can also click and drag a selection box like this to select multiple different objects. Notice how when I did that, what it does is it gives me the length of both objects right here. So that's gonna give me the ability to select multiple different things and get their info really quickly like this using the entity info. Now I'm going to close this by clicking on the icon. And so another way to select objects on SketchUp for iPad that I find myself using a lot more than I do on the desktop version is using the lasso select. What the lasso select is going to do is that's going to allow you to actually draw around a shape like this in order to select things. So I can use this in order to more precisely select things inside of my model like this. So that's just another way to select things, but I actually find myself using this one a bunch inside of the iPad version. And so this is gonna work a lot the same way that um, SketchUp on your computer does in the sense that let's say I draw a rectangle like this and notice how your rectangle also gives you the ability to lock to different axes. So for example, I can lock a rectangle to the X axis and notice how it's gonna draw a rectangle standing up like this. So you can use this in order to lock things like your rectangles to those axes as well. But now I wanna come in here and I wanna push pull this shape up. So I'm gonna activate the push pull tool right here. And then I'm just gonna click and drag on this shape like this. And so I can use this in order to drag to a certain height. Notice the inferencing is active on this tool. But again, let's say I wanted this to be four feet tall. I could just type in a value of four feet and hit the enter key in order to do that. The other tools are gonna to work the same way too. So let's say we were to draw on the surface right here. So let's say we wanted to cut a hole. We could draw another rectangle on the surface. Well then, if I select in here, notice how this has split that face up into two separate faces. Well now, what I can do is I can use the push pull tool to extrude this to the back. So notice how when I click and drag, this is gonna push pull this back. Well, if I push pull over this back corner right here and let up, 
notice what that's going to do is that's going to cut an opening inside of the surface right here. So again, you can use this in order to quickly cut holes or do other things inside of SketchUp. So your other tools are going to work the same way as well. So let's say we were to draw a cylinder right here, push pull it up like this, and then we were to select it using the select tool. And I'm just going to select the edge around the outside. Well, we could use the scale tool in order to scale this in. However, remember on your computer, you can do things like holding the control key in order to do that about center. You can do that if you have a mouse and keyboard selected, but most of the time now your modifiers are going to show up over here. So if I click on this, right, notice how I can set this to give me either an about center or a uniform scale. So if I set this to scale something about center, like this, it's going to scale this based on that central point right here. So the move tool is going to work kind of the same way. So we're going to take this, we can move things up and down just by selecting them. And so you can also apply materials by clicking on the paint bucket tool right here and picking a material. So if I was to click on a material right here, and then I was to click on the surface, notice how it's going to color that surface based on the material that I've applied to it. So in the next video, we're going to continue this series by talking about how we can create more of a practical model in SketchUp. So um, I will link to that on this page as soon as I get it made. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.